Tonight, the U.S. to give up ICANN oversight. Popcorn time is done, and Chinese hackers target Hollywood. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 44 for March 14th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. Happy pie day, everyone. I know I had some pie. Did you? I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First, the U.S. Commerce Department will relinquish its control over ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, something it's had since the turn of the century. ICANN is the Los Angeles-based nonprofit organization that currently manages the technical backend connecting computers to the many servers and websites that make up the Internet. With global pressure mounting significantly as the Snowden NSA revelations have continued to surface and the European Union's proposal for a clear guideline to globalize the organization's duties, ICANN has pushed for the ability to transform into a global institution, free of the oversight that it current, currently has with the U.S. Control of ICANN will be given up once the current contract with the U.S. expires in the fall of 2015. Big news there. It's official. Chinese microblogging service uh, Sina Weibo just filed papers for an IPO. The service is often compared to Twitter and is enjoying exponential growth. Sina Weibo increased its monthly active users by a third last year to 129.1 million. It also posted revenue of $188.3 million and a net loss of 38 million last year, but has listed concerns about censorship as a risk factor in its filing. Alibaba, China's e-commerce service, owns 18% of the company and is expected to launch its own IPO in coming months. Analysts estimate anywhere between a 3 to $8 billion valuation for Weibo. How about some mobile news bits? First, Samsung's upcoming low-end device, the Galaxy Core Advance, is about to get some innovative accessories that could really be useful to the visually impaired as well as people with disabilities. Optical character recognition that translates text into speech is made easier with the optical scan stand accessory. NFC tags called voice labels that enable the visually impaired to easily make voice notations for operating devices that happen to be scattered around the home. And finally, the ultrasonic cover. This uses sound waves to detect the location of people and objects and reports that information to the user by way of spoken alerts or vibrations. A little love being thrown to the low-end devices for a change. And Nokia's answer to Lytro called Refocus, which has only been available to Lumia PureView devices up until now, is now available to all Lumia devices running Windows Phone 8. The app sweeps the image being taken to, depth, to detect depth of field information, allowing you to basically later make focus and selective color changes to the image. And speaking of Nokia, the Nokia X phone hit a big milestone just days after the phone went on sale in certain parts of the world, with the company announcing that one million pre-orders have been placed in China. Turns out there is demand for an inexpensive Nokia phone running Android. And yes, it took a few days, but the inevitable has happened to popcorn time. The app, which let you download movies and TV shows for free, had just launched, rose quickly in popularity, became the ire of Hollywood, and now the anonymous owners have shut it down with this to say, quote, our experiment has put us at the doors of endless debates about piracy and copyright, legal threats, and the shady machinery that makes us feel in danger for doing what we love. And that's not a battle we want a place in, end quote. In a posting today on Medium, they went on to say, quote, popcorn time as a project is legal. We checked four times, end quote. All right, four times. That's, that's due diligence right there. Coming up, are you just sick of selfies? Now there's a special place in the App Store just for them. And joining us next is David Cohen from Variety to talk about how China's hackers are targeting Hollywood. But first... Let's take a moment to welcome our sponsor to the, to the episode. This episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from industry experts. With a lynda.com subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. 
Want to improve your photography, master your new software, boost your web design skills, learn programming? At lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different topics and, and subjects all over the site. You can watch from your computer, tablet, or even your mobile device. The instructors are accomplished professionals. They're experts in their field who are passionate about teaching. And each course is structured, so you can learn from start to finish or just jump on to find a quick answer. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or $37.50 a month gets you a subscription to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. That's lynda.com slash TN2. Thank you, guys. All right, joining me now is David Cohen. Very happy to have you on the show, Senior Editor at Variety. Welcome, David. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's good to have you here. So, David, first of all, you wrote the article, China's Hackers to Target U.S. Entertainment Industry, Security Firm Warns. First, what's the most alarming thing about this potential threat? Well, I think there's two different questions there. One is, what do the authors of this report right. think is most alarming? And then there's, what do I think is most alarming, which is something else altogether. I, I think the, the authors of the report think it's alarming that the Chinese government would like to usurp America's place as the leader in the entertainment, the filmed entertainment industry, gain that cultural power, and that they will infiltrate American business communications, that they will potentially send spies into American companies, that they will hack in and attempt to steal technology and steal expertise. All this sort of theft and breaking in is meant to be very alarming. The idea of spies, I think, is meant to be very alarming. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what is alarming is, is really just the business communications portion of that, because an awful lot of what you might think could be stolen from Hollywood isn't really very stealable. You know, you can steal files, but you can't steal the skills of a cinematographer. You could steal the plans for the electronics to make a digital intermediate suite, but that doesn't make you a colorist. You can steal a company's notes on screenplays, but that doesn't make you a screenwriter. So I'm not exactly sure why we're supposed to be al as alarmed about this as this report wants to make it out to be. Yeah, that kind of leads right into my next question is just about what the Chinese might have to gain if this were the case. I mean, how exactly might U.S. domination of that filmed entertainment be seen as a strategic advantage for the U.S. Uh, in the eyes of China? Well, I think that so much of what gives America a soft power advantage in, from its dominance in filmed entertainment is taken for granted here that people don't even entirely understand it or recognize it. Even something as basic as the theme of so many children's stories, it's, oh, it's okay to be different, be yourself, stand up for yourself. That's a very controversial and somewhat subversive idea in some parts of the world. And in China, the cultural norm isn't it's okay to be different, it's more likely to be the nail that stands up gets hammered down. Mm -hmm. So even at these very, very basic levels that I, I don't think in America are really thought of as a way to project American values, uh, at least not so much anymore, uh, but are mainly done just to try to find a, a positive message that you can convey in your story. Uh, in China, they see that and they say, we want to send out our messages. We uh, want to send right. out messages that, that make us look good and make our values uh, attractive to the world. Man, more than anything, this sounds like a good movie in and of itself. Uh, now, you wrote about the economic and political motives involved here. What exactly are these competing agendas? Well, there's no doubt that the Chinese government has a soft power agenda and aspires to the kind of cultural leadership around the world that the United States has had for close to 100 years. However, that's the government's agenda. And the agenda of business in China is profit. And they've been very, very successful and encouraged by their government to pursue profit. And what's happening in the Chinese film market is that market is growing so quickly that there's so much money to be made in it that Chinese producers aren't thinking about making films that will travel to the United States and in Europe and South America or the Middle East. They're thinking about films that will play domestically. 
And that's where they're making their money. And as a result, those films tend to be very culturally specific, and they don't travel well, which is why you're not seeing a lot of Chinese films, even at your local art house. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Now, finally, how likely is it? You say in your article, the warning is a result of a study by FireEye. They're a security company that, I mean, obviously could stand uh, to gain a lot based on their own research here. Do you think that influences the findings? Let me say this in the clearest <laughs> possible terms. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, I think this report is somewhat alarmist and meant to be alarmist. And, but that is not the same as saying that it is wrong. Uh, um, I think that there's no doubt that there's a ton of Chinese hacking going on. There's no doubt that uh, China is a haven for intellectual property piracy and probably will be until China's intellectual property is being pirated, at which point they'll, they'll get more interested in protecting that. Um, I don't think that Hollywood has to worry very much about spies coming in and its entry-level employees or about theft of scripts in development. I do think that uh, Hollywood does have to worry about infiltration of its communications and theft of its content. Yeah. You know, that, that when people are conducting multi-billion dollar negotiations with, ch with Chinese companies or Chinese government entities, those confidential communications can be a big advantage for the other side if they're stolen. And then, of course, once that product is out on the web and, or stolen in a digital form, digital files can be cloned and are infinitely copyable and then the cat's out of the bag. Absolutely. Well, David, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a fascinating story and kind of an interesting thing to think about, whether it actually comes to fruition or not. Uh, we can always be safer, I suppose. Uh, how can people find your work or connect with you online? You can find me on Variety.com or my own website, DSCohen.com. Fantastic. Thanks again, David. Thank you. All right. And finally, Apple's App Store has a new section dedicated solely to selfies, or at least a collection of apps that help you take the best selfies possible. Sharing selfies showed up in the App Store yesterday and includes apps like Snapchat, Front Back, and Everyday. The term selfie was selected as Oxford Dictionary's Word of the Year in 2013, but before you judge Apple too harshly for jumping on the bandwagon, it's just a featured section in the App Store, not a permanent category. Not yet, anyways. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. I'm Jason Howell. Have a good weekend and thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.